Hi, my name is Mark Johnson. I'm the co-founder and senior partner of Innisight. I'm very grateful to be here to speak about dual transformation and appreciate for Anchim's opportunity that they are giving me to talk to all of you. By way of background, let me just explain a little bit about Innisight. I founded Innisight with Professor Clay Christensen in 2000. We focused on trying to help companies understand the challenges of disruptive innovation, how they can be disrupted and how they can avoid being disrupted and how they could actually turn something like disruptive innovation into an opportunity as opposed to a threat. As we dug into the work and we realized the way companies struggled to not only face disruption but just simply the ability to survive, to be able to sustain growth over a long period of time, we came to the realization that companies need to continually drive a successful, healthy core business that is very, very important to sustain that core, to be thinking of ways to innovate, thinking of ways to stay with what the customer views as value, at the same time being ready to think about how they might need to go beyond their core business, how they might need to plant seeds to invest in the future. This became the background, the basis for the work we started a number of years ago, over five years ago, called Dual Transformation, where we began to understand that the concept of transforming a business to make it sustainable in terms of its growth needed to be a twofold transformation. They needed to be able to continue to drive improvement to their core business with their core customers and how they create value, at the same time being able to think about what they would do that's the new and different that would be things that go beyond their core to sustain their business for the long haul. So let me go into talking a little bit about the particulars of this concept of dual transformation, the basis of the book that we wrote under the same name. So dual transformation has three parts. There's an A transformation, which is about repositioning, sustaining the core through the innovation that's needed to transform the core business. How do you reposition the core to be able to keep up with the continual evolution of what customers value most about your product or your service? Any product goes through a life cycle where it may start off to be important about its features and functions, um, it, the service just basically providing the basics of the service. Over time, the product or service tends to be based more on how can you make this a reliably provided product or service. And then it continues on to be about how do you make it most customized or convenient to finally, how does it bring everything together but do it at lower and lower costs. In this transition of what we would call the basis of competition, the business and the business model of, the, of this core business need to change, need to adjust to adapt to changing customer needs and demands. It's all about really deeply understanding how these customer needs, or what we call jobs to be done, change, and then how do you change the value proposition for those customers in what they're trying to do, and subsequently, how does the business and the business model need to change and reposition to do that? So that's what we call transformation A. And it's all about the adjustments that are needed in the core to be able to enable that to happen. We're going to talk about companies like Netflix, who started out with overnight mail delivery, um, sending DVDs of, to watch movies overnight through the mail, transforming their business pretty quickly to be not only about just uh, selling overnight, but making the business centered on subscription that you could actually have as many movies as you want in a given month uh, through one monthly subscription within limits to try to drive you know, further convenience for their customers. So that's what we would say was a transformation A, that they moved the business and the business model from simply charging per movie to distribute through the mail um, to charging on a monthly subscription basis. That's transformation A. Transformation B is all about 
this new and different idea. It's accessing potentially new customers in new ways to help um, enable them to do something that they currently can't do. Uh, it's about creating more accessibility. It's about developing more affordability for a product or service. So again, Netflix's ability to be able to go from just selling product, selling a DVD to actually moving into using the internet in streaming content. So not only did they provide a new service to their existing customers and changed, if you will, the how of their business, not necessarily the what, because they were still uh, providing movies, but just in a different way. They also opened up new markets for customers that <clears throat> would never think of um, doing things through the mail, but are much more tech savvy and were willing to have streaming, um, which was much more about instant gratification that they could get the movie on demand. Um, and so not only did they continue to evolve their existing market, but they opened up a whole new market of convenience and access and affordability, what we would call transformation B, and it really created net new growth. The C part of this is the capabilities link. And the capabilities link describes how the core business with all of its resources and all of its knowledge and know-how can be enabling to the new and different B business, which is essentially a smaller business to begin with because it needs to develop a market, it needs to create a customer. And so resources and skills and know-how of the core business are provided to the new and different B business, the B transformation, but we don't want the core business to be providing necessarily the, the way it does its traditional business in terms of processes, in terms of rules and norms and metrics. Those kinds of processes are probably not appropriate for the new business and business model. Um, so the capabilities link is very important to create collaboration between um, core business people and new B business people um, through what we would call exchange teams but they're not, um, and they're working very collaboratively and very carefully so that the B business can pull what it needs, but not have imparted upon it uh, different kinds of um, rules and processes and norms that won't be effective for trying to create this new business and this new business model. Let me give you one example to bring this to light. So uh, electronics retailer Best Buy, um, almost 20 years ago, bought a company called Geek Squad, which was basically um, IT services to help uh, be able to, as a consumer, install various electronics that you bought at the store and implement them into your, ho into your house, such as a, uh, you know, a home entertainment system. They bought it when it was very small. Geek Squad was only three million or less US dollars. What Best Buy did was basically say, we didn't buy Geek Squad, Geek Squad bought Best Buy. It was that kind of mindset that allowed Geek Squad to pull what it needed in terms of distribution and brand and other resources to be able to enable its IT services to grow by helping to serve more and more customers who were trying to implement these uh, consumer retail products, these consumer electronics. Um, so it was the ability of, of Best Buy to work with Geek Squad the right way that allowed this small startup to be nurtured and grown through the distribution channels of Best Buy um, and that resource, but all of Best Buy's rules and norms and processes that govern being a large big box retailer um, were not imparted on to what the company was doing on the Geek Squad side. Finally, Geek Squad provided interesting insights and data and understanding to Best Buy to help them better improve what they did as a core business in terms of customer service and understanding how they could better enable the way they provided service in store uh, to its customers that were coming through to the Best Buy stores. So in a nutshell, that is the definition of dual transformation.
There's an A transformation, repositioning the core business. There's a B transformation, which is about identifying underserved markets uh, by, by being able to create uh, products and services to access those underserved markets with a value proposition and business model that works. And then there's a C or capabilities link, which connects the two, the existing core business with the newly developed B business and being able to effectively exchange resources and ideas to be able to help both of those businesses thrive. Let me offer up just a couple other examples in addition to the Netflix and the Best Buy example. You know, at Innosite, we've done quite a bit of work with a health insurer here in the United States, Aetna. Aetna conducted its own dual transformation, moving from just being about insuring for risk businesses to moving more towards health and health care, moving into the consumer set and being able to provide really a holistic offering to help individuals better manage their health. That opens up a whole new potential market for individuals to be able to prevent chronic disease and actually having an insurance company that has lots and lots of data about um, tracking various health issues through the management of their insurance to move towards being able to provide offerings direct to consumer as opposed to being able, as opposed to just going through large employers. At the same time, back to their traditional business, they had to make major changes to their core business as healthcare regulatory actions were changing what we called the Affordable Care Act was moving towards changing the way the core business would have to function under the Affordable Care Act. What's interesting is the CEO, Mark Bernalini, started thinking about both the transformation of the core and coming up with this new business to consumer for wellness approach at a time when things were massively successful for Aetna. But he could see the writing in the wall that these regulatory changes, even though at the time they were actually helping their business, would at some point mean that they would need to change and transform to really consider themselves something way beyond an insurance company to really a provider of wellness. That's, that's one uh, additional example that I think is worth noting. The other, just to make sure um, everybody knows there is a dual transformation that's happening at Amazon. Amazon is oftentimes quoted as highly innovative company, and that's true. Um, in fact, I wrote in a book uh, called Seizing the White Space that's been refreshed now to call Reinvent Your Business Model about Amazon and call them a business model innovator. But I think what also makes Amazon unique is that they continue to drive a set of core businesses while also creating new complete customers and spaces of growth. Perhaps the most famous transformation or B transformation of Amazon is developing Amazon Web Services, basically a pioneering company of taking IT to the cloud, um, providing information and data and managing um, web services in the cloud with what they called Amazon Web Services, which enabled them to open up a whole new market of small business owners because of um, their understanding and their innovation prowess to take what they used to enable their retail online retail business, all those servers, all of that IT backbone, and provide it as a service to small business owners. Now that I've given you the concept of dual transformation and given you a few examples to try to bring it alive, I'd like to talk now about the challenge of implementing a dual transformation within a company. I think anytime we're talking about innovation and efforts that go beyond the core, we run the challenge of the difficulties getting beyond the existing business's way of doing things for years, the orthodoxies, if you will, the processes, the rules, norms, and metrics that govern the way a company repeatedly drives service for its customers at scale, trying to go outside of those processes and rules and norms to serve a new customer in a new way, um, creates difficulty, uh, creates difficulty, again, given the business and the business model, 
it creates difficulty that a number of these efforts take time. Uh, they won't come to fruition right away, and if there are demands for the financials, um, companies often lose patience to be able to make these transformation efforts, especially B transformation, take place. There's difficulty in the challenges between <clears throat> what the core business continues to do and what this new and different B business is trying. And there's oftentimes friction between the competition of scarce resources or uh, how employees value what's important to customers or conflict in terms of which customer set should be getting more attention or just simply the fear that an existing business could go away and the new business could be more of the dominant way of doing things. And all those kinds of issues come up and make it very difficult for um, dual transformation to, to effectively um, be enabled through the company. So I think we have to break down what we have seen as what we would call crises that occur and being able to understand them so that we can try to overcome them. So in summary, the first challenge that we see with dual transformation is what we call a crisis of commitment. Um, the ability to marshal um, the resources, to develop teams, to be able to get people committed both towards the importance of the core business and transforming that business while also identifying people that are willing and able uh, to do something new and different that starts small with a lot of unpredictability about it, concerns about their careers, concerns about um, doing something that goes away from what they've traditionally done, new people coming in that may not have the same kind of um, understanding of the culture, all those kinds of things make um, staying committed towards the effort of dual transformation difficult. We sometimes face the fact that, again, in trying to do a dual transformation where you will have a lot of unknowns and uncertainties and you have to test them out, you have to be patient that as um, challenges happen in the core business, <clears throat> there is a tendency to lose patience for uh, the time it takes to really develop out new opportunities. And so oftentimes these things get shut down as um, there's a view we can just double down, um, reinforce what we've always done in the past. Um, so this commitment piece is a big challenge, again, because part of the, 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 the rationale for any of these dual transformations is being able to give it the scope of time and oftentimes there's just not enough patience to enable that to happen. The second challenge that we see or crises is a crisis of um, conflict. As we embark on a transformation A and trying to reposition the core business for sustained growth, um, as we embark on a transformation B to go beyond the core to identify new markets and customers where there's opportunity to create new value. They compete, as I mentioned, for resources all the time to continue to grow the core and also develop the new. And there becomes a conflict in competing for those resources. There co comes a conflict in really what is the B business doing that's additive to the overall enterprise in the eyes of those that are in the A business there becomes a conflict in terms of um, the A business feeling like it's not sufficiently validated in what it does and becomes quite concerned about what the B business is doing that it could actually threaten the actual existence of what the core business is doing. So we have to be able to overcome this conflict and that's where top leadership needs to be heavily involved all throughout this dual transformation to constantly be sponsoring and nurturing and encouraging um, how both transformations are very important, how this capabilities link, this C uh, part of the equation, needs to continually be managed through teams and through the right governance to be able to make sure that these conflicts that arise can be resolved so that the transformation can continue, especially when it runs into many difficult days 
as it's trying to flesh out how business actually is going to evolve and transform over the years. The, fa the last crisis that we've identified is what we would call a crisis of identity. As the business as a whole evolves, as the A transformation works to reposition the core business, such as what Netflix did um, in trying to move into the subscription service, or in the B transformation, which is really an evolution all the way over to digital streaming of content and creating their own content at Netflix. The core business in this DVDs has gone down to virtually zero. The business is really now a content production and streaming business. There's a point where there's a question of identity. Is this really the same company, Netflix, that we signed up in the beginning as employees? And so they're oftentimes in these stages as the B business can oftentimes grow and, and, and become much bigger than the A business. Questions about what are we really becoming as a company as a whole. It requires, again, top leadership to set an important statement about vision, about mission, about values, so that everybody clearly understands that as a company fully transforms in this way, that it's still in keeping with what its purpose has been all along. And that's the important part of what leadership needs to do. So if a company can think up front about these challenges, which are almost inevitable, the crisis of commitment, the crisis of conflict, and the crisis of identity, by understanding them up front, you'll have a much greater li likelihood of being able to navigate through these challenges as they come to face a company over time. The world is changing faster than ever. I know that's a bit cliche, but the reality is that companies are gonna continually face commoditization, disruption, at an ever and ever faster clip. We need more ways of thinking strategically, more approaches as senior leaders and others, managers in the company, to be able to navigate all of these challenges. We propose dual transformation. It's the way to understand a continual healthy core and a repositioning of the core is essential with the understanding that most companies will sooner or later have to go beyond their core and beyond their adjacencies into what we'd say new white spaces to serve new customers in new ways, a B transformation, and understand that the core business with its changes and the new and different businesses with their new developments will need to continually collaborate to leverage what's good about being an established company, again, what we call the capabilities linked. We believe that Votoranchim has a great opportunity. First of all, you're embracing the idea that you need to innovate and change and that something like dual transformation could be an enabler to seeing the next successful 100 years to add to your already successful existing 100 years of growth and sustainability. We wish you the best in being able to recognize all the challenges that companies face, just like you're facing, but also recognize all the opportunities that are out there to continue to be able to serve customers, new customers, in valuable ways by being able to take all the skills and the competencies and the resources and, and the know-how that you've developed over all these years and deploy them in lots of innovative ways and enabled by technology, enabled by the internet to be able to provide value in new and different ways. And through that, excite your, your customers, excite your employees, give yourself the opportunity to be able to thrive and grow in the 21st century.